Friday, March 27, 2015 was an exciting day for 17-year-old Tiara Hall. It marked the final day of school before the much-awaited spring break, and she eagerly looked forward to the upcoming holiday. Nothing from that day was out of the ordinary, and the school's surveillance cameras caught her going about her day as normal, yet things would very quickly take a turn for the worse, and Tiara never made it home that day. The following day, on March 28, a heart-wrenching discovery was made. Tiara's lifeless body was found in an abandoned house less than two miles away from the school. The grim scene revealed the horrific extent of a brutal attack. She'd been stabbed 14 times to her head, neck, face, and chest, with the only pieces of evidence left behind were the school hall pass found in her pocket, her phone case lying beside her, and graffiti on the house's wall bearing the ominous inscription, King K the Savage. With no other leads or substantial evidence to guide them, investigators turned their attention to the school's surveillance cameras, and it was during this scrutiny that they came across an unsettling discovery. This is the heartbreaking case of Tierra Hall. Tierra Hall was a 17-year-old girl from Durham, North Carolina. She actually grew up in Texas, but moved with her mom to Durham in 2011. Life in North Carolina seemed to go well for Tierra. She enrolled in Jordan High School and very quickly made a host of friends due to her magnetic personality. Her funny and goofy nature drew people to her, and her unique nature would lift the spirits of those around her. Tierra was a free spirit who had dreams of pursuing a business degree after graduating high school. It was also during her time at Jordan High School that Tierra met fellow student Kelton Breshen Fox. The two formed a bond from the start, and it wasn't long before they started dating. Tierra's mom observed Kelton's demeanor closely, and she found him to be a well-mannered individual who always exuded respect and courtesy. And although there were never any obvious red flags, her mom did notice that their relationship seemed to be an on-and-off-again relationship. Not too concerned, she brushed it off as part of the ups and downs that are often part of teenage romance, and she didn't see it as anything more than typical teenage drama. Around the time of Christmas in 2014, something, however, shifted in the dynamics between Tierra and Kelton. It seemed that Tierra had made the decision to end their relationship once and for all, and it was clear that this time there was no going back. When her mom inquired about the reason for their breakup, Tierra told her that Kelton was too clingy making her question the longevity of their relationship. I tried to get her to elaborate on what clinging meant. She said, like, you're just too clingy. And she just brushed it off. Like, I was like, okay. He was so mannerable. He shook my hand, was yes ma'am, no ma'am, made sure she got in the house before he left, everything. So, I mean, I had no reason to think that he would do anything to her. I thought he loved her. On Friday, March 27th, 2015, Tierra was getting ready for the last day of school before the much-anticipated spring break. During the course of that morning, however, she got into an argument with her mom, as often is the case between a mother and her teenage daughter. The fight wasn't anything significant, and before Tierra even left for school, the air was cleared, and she even hugged her mom goodbye, not knowing that this would be the last time they ever saw each other again. During the course of the day, her mother tried calling and texting Tierra to check up on her, but all her messages went unanswered. Initially, her mother brushed off the lack of response, assuming that Tierra was probably preoccupied with her activities at school. But as the hours wore on and the silence continued, accompanied by the fact that Tierra didn't come home after school, her mother's concerns grew. Tierra had always been a responsible and thoughtful girl, always keeping her mom informed of her whereabouts and the company she kept, so for her not to make any contact was definitely out of character. Tierra didn't come home at all that night, and at the time her mom thought that she was probably still upset about the fight they had that morning and that she was probably just staying over at a friend's place blowing off some steam. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. She was so good about telling me where she was going to be, who she was going to be with, when she was coming home, Mom cannot stay because she had a mistrust of people. But this happens to her? She was a happy-go-lucky, humble girl. I had no trouble out of her, no trouble. The following morning, police received a concerning 911 call. A man said that he and his girlfriend discovered what they thought was a woman sleeping at an abandoned house just two miles from Jordan High School. When police arrived at the scene, they found the body of Tierra Hall. Police attending the crime scene described it as nothing short of brutal with Tierra having suffered 14 stab wounds to her head, neck, face, 
and chest. Next to her body was her phone case, although her phone was nowhere to be found. On the wall of the house not too far from her body, they saw graffiti that read, King K the Savage, and in her pocket they found a hall pass for Jordan High School. Police went to the school and immediately started examining the CCTV footage to try and spot Tierra, looking for any clues of what may have happened to her. It wasn't long until they spotted Tierra going about her day, walking through the hallways and eventually entering a classroom. Nothing seemed to be out of the ordinary, so the police went to the classroom to look for clues. There they found Tierra's backpack next to her desk and her computer still logged into her account. This was clearly a concerning sign, and they knew that there was much more to uncover. They then continued to examine the CCTV footage, hoping to find any other clues which may help solve the case. At around 12.30 p.m., they spot Tierra in the hallway interacting with Kelton, Bresch, and Fox. At first, their conversation seems to be playful before Kelton grabs what appears to be Tierra's cell phone before taking off. Tierra then jumps up and runs after Kelton, following him out of the school property and towards the abandoned house about two miles away. Footage from a neighbor's camera captures Kelton passing at about 12.40 p.m., with Tierra following behind less than a minute later. Twenty minutes later, the same surveillance camera captures Kelton returning to the school, but this time there wasn't anyone following him. Kelton goes back into the school as if nothing had happened, and he immediately walks towards the restroom. He places his hands inside his sleeves, presumably to hide the blood on his hands. Kelton emerges a short while later, and this time his hands are no longer covered. He goes to the school office where he tells staff that he wasn't feeling well, so they called his mom to pick him up. Kelton left the school with his mom at around 10 past 2. Armed with this new evidence, police went to search the school restroom. Despite Kelton's best efforts of cleaning up the scene, they found bloodstains around the trash can, which was later confirmed to be Tierra's. A search of his bedroom revealed a pair of sneakers that contained traces of blood, as well as a journal that had the words King K the Savage written on it. The contents of the journal revealed an obsession with Tierra, his suspicion that she had someone else, as well as the mention of his uncontrollable lust for blood. Police then arrested Kelton Breshen Fox on suspicion of murder, and because he was a minor at the time, they took his mom along to sit in on his interrogation. Prior to interrogating Kelton, however, they first interviewed his mom and asked her if she knew if Kelton carried any sort of weapons. Does he normally carry a weapon or anything like that? Do you have, have you ever known? Like, no, but I wouldn't say that. Like, no, but a little, um, what's called a little pocket knife? I know he had pocket knife. Yeah, he liked it. A search of Kelton's room, however, revealed a particular affinity to knives. When police questioned Kelton, they wanted to know if he had left the school at any time. At this time, they had already seen the CCTV footage of him walking to the abandoned house. But of course, Kelton didn't know it at the time. Um, did you leave the campus at any time? Or a slow break. Okay, where did it? So, I mean, so you left during the high school? I was there on campus, but... Okay. You know, I was... Okay, so... You let me, let me refresh that. Do you ever leave during the high school property? Yeah. Never did. Okay. Can I see you a little bit? Let me just make sure. I'm hearing this right. Mm -hmm. That you never left the property. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that I'm I'm hearing that right. Because I, um, yeah. Uh, that, that's, that's lie number one. So I'm just letting you, you know that that's, that's lie number one. I let them know that I know everything. So... So go ahead and continue on. We'll, we'll talk about that lie here in a minute. I'm going to tell my son that he thinks I'm not. On June 14, 2018, more than three years after Tierra Hall's murder, Kelton Breshen Fox pleaded guilty to second degree murder. He was sentenced to 12 to 15 years in prison which means he is due to be released in April 2027. The defense put forward his mental illness and his age at the time as mitigating circumstances to the case, and they also mentioned the state's inability to prove premeditated murder. The state, on the other hand, believed that Tierra's cell phone, which has not yet been found, would have provided evidence of her having been in contact with another guy, and this would have been the motive for the murder and proof that Kelton had planned the attack. They said that after he realized that Tierra had moved on, 
and that he no longer had a chance with her, he planned to kill her instead. His plan was to grab her phone, knowing that she would follow him to the abandoned house, where he would then carry out his gruesome deed. When this happened, Kelton couldn't vote. He couldn't buy cigarettes. He couldn't buy alcohol. He couldn't serve in the military and fight in the battle. He was a child. And importantly, he had a child's brain. He's going to be sentenced to a minimum of 144 months.